Okay. Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. So wonderful. All right. Let's do this. Let's do this, everybody. And a three. And a two. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Plank and Sell Show with Mark. Celebrating its 10-year anniversary, dominating the podcast world. Now sit back and relax, and let's welcome your host, Blake, Sal, and Mark! But I don't know why without you it's hard to show. Cause every time we touch, I get Hello and welcome to the Lake of Show with Mark. Apparently, Party City here. Uh, <laughs> episode number. I don't remember beyond. I lost track of the number. I lost track of the screen. 475. 475. There you go. 475. I am, I am your host, Blake. And um, not going to lie, I just finished watching Astoke, and I am still trying to process what I just watched for the last two hours. But not, not, not I a literally thing. just did the same thing. I've, yeah, not, I've just not even joking. Not joking. <laughs> you you guys need a moment to kind of like decompress or something? Let's bring it on, everybody. Let's bring everybody on. Okay. First of all, um, the biggest deal of podcasting, who's apparently. St- Oh, okay. Who actually decides instead of watching Dynamite, I'm not going to watch Big Brother anymore now. <laughs> I'm not going to watch Dynamite anymore. Uh, Sal, how you doing? I'm sorry, but Big Brother season, everything gets put off to the side. If you're like me, so. you know what you do. I, I don't watch it live. I watch everything the next day without commercials on Paramount Plus. <laughs> and so I, no, I can't. I can't wait. No, I can't wait. Movie, it's a tape show anyway. So I, <laughs> Big Brother is my first love. I can't. I can't do that. <laughs> All right. Um, we got we have the man, the myth, the legend. Um, the fa- person who can't apparently figure out the that TJ's Spanish teacher is not named Emilie. <laughs> Mark, Dad, how you doing? You mean his his Spanish teacher is not Emilie? No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Damn! I thought I had that right. Anyway, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm doing well. Besides the uh, heat and humidity. I'm in a cool, nice place, so... All right, let me turn okay. that up. A meat locker? No, actually, no our, but that's my next choice. <laughs> what is going on? Our, um, our, our, our air conditioning is working fantastic. I'm not going to lie. Even our room is not even as hot and early, which is because we closed the window and like they have all our fans on. Just to make sure our room is as cool as possible today. All right, let's go around. We have a full house here today, as I said, if we were jumping on. Um, first things first. I'm on my own against the walls. The pressure's building, but no, I will never fall. Instead of trying, they hear me roar. And now I see that I'm way better than before. I never needed you at all. When you fall down, I'm gonna watch you fall down. I'm living large now. I never needed you at all. When you fall down, I'm gonna watch you fall down. I'm living large now. I never needed you at all. Coming to us from the and the Mandy show. My beautiful wife. Mandy, welcome to the show. Hello, gentlemen. Let's see who I can piss off today. I know. I'll, I'll get to that when we get to the plugs. I'll get to that <laughs> when we get to the plugs. Blake said we had a full house. Where's John Stamos? We can't afford him. <laughs> we can't afford Damn. him. We have a different have you John. Asked him? We have a different John here. We can't even afford one of the twins. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> When are you gonna come down? When are you going to that? I should have stayed on the phone. I should have listened to my own mouth. You never know. I didn't sign up for you. 
And that a friend for your friends to open. Stories too young to resist again. Let's bring on our friend from that minute, John Parker. John, welcome to the show. Hey, hello. I'm back and better than Hello, that. Governor. <laughs> we all say that. We all do. A world traveler <laughs> over here. Every time I see you on Facebook, you're somewhere else. <laughs> Every time I see <laughs> Yeah, basically, that's my life at the moment. Like, yeah, yeah, not necessarily going too far, but, you know, yeah, I was well, going around Scotland like last week. That was fun. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> well, you, you, you know, they don't like it's normal. <laughs> they don't like it's the most normal thing in the world. You know, <laughs> to kind of keep with Mandy's background there, you, you know, the old saying, no matter where you go, there you are. Uh, yeah, uh, indeed. Yeah. I will say, though, I was trying my damnest not to crack up laughing during the introduction, but Mandy kept changing the background. <laughs> I mean, kept changing the background <laughs> on her screen. Okay, I'll, I'll ask the question. What's with the Brady Bunch background? Well, also Price is right. <laughs> oh, Price is right. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> do, 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 do. If, she, if she has, if do, do, she has do, do, Star do, do, Wars do, do, as her do, do, next do, do, background. Yeah, part of it, I had a Star Wars background that didn't work with my hell. Oh, hey, let me, <laughs> you let me long time. Wait, 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 let me see if I can get a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> that is harder than you think. I, I play the. Uh, uh, we we all we all stuck. I um <laughs> I play um I play the um I play the um the bingo version of um President Wright game and spinning for a dollar is a lot harder than you think. <laughs> it really is difficult. <laughs> <laughs> that game. <laughs> all right, let's get started. We have a lot to do today. Um, so I was glad here. Let's get started. Help support the show and all the product and the product pre work. Yeah, can't kind of show the product work at the like I you can tell I'm out of sync here. So go. Wow, uh, you can buy our shirts, stickers, hoodies, exotic pets, and more from our T Public store. And there goes my camera. Uh, you can go click on the T Public link on our website or go to T Public and search the Blake and Sal Show. Hey, did our Blake and Sal Show mark portable AC cooling units come in yet? No, but again, they always say pick one up, get a sticker, throw it on there. <laughs> I always say patent oh, pending. Do it. Do like it. I want one. <laughs> <laughs> metal item actually available and i swear after we come back with a break i'll be more on june you can this is what happened we take a month off <laughs> all right we're back okay what's just a plug first of all um pick up mandy's book i know i am available on amazon bars and noble orange publishing in english and in spanish we're going to continue on honey where are you going to be in september for your book <laughs> And watch, look, set up. I'll continue on with the plugs. The Nini and Mandy Show, available on all podcasting platforms, part of the Legacy Social family. The controversial Nini and Mandy Show, currently up right now. If you haven't heard this week's show, go listen to it. It has cost some drama, and I love this so much. Like, we need a short form version of this because this sounds exciting. What the hell? <laughs> there was a lot of drama. We can't really get to on this show. Right. Uh, whatever, whatever happened to save the drama for your mama? It's their podcast. They can do what they want. I called out someone, didn't think by name, they, by government name. <laughs> didn't think they would listen to the show, and they had to hear about how shitty of a friend they were. Oh, well, you know what? If they uh, didn't want to be called out, then they shouldn't have been a shitty friend. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly what we said. That's exactly but, what. <laughs> but we do think that person. For listening and giving support to Nadine and Mandy show. Yeah, as I said, all downloads <laughs> matter. Thank you very much for that. So, honey, where are you going to be next month? <laughs> I am going to be at the Southport Literary Fair in Kenosha. It's an event by Blue House Books and Kenosha Public Library, and I'm excited. So, yay! That's why I have to go know. I got sucked back in. What's the date? Uh, it is September 30th. It's a Saturday, and I'll be there from 11 to 4. Yes. Are you, exciting. like, reading and stuff? Um, I will be signing books and maybe doing a panel. That's up to them. So, oh, cool. And I'll I make, sure to... I bring the, I make sure I bring the video camera and record everything. So we get, yeah, get, to, get to interact with people and sign books and whatnot. So 
Like I said, I thought I was done. I'm apparently not. No, no. Not only is she not done, done, she got requested for this. Like, she got a request <laughs> to do this. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> well, I'm really glad I got that request before my controversial takes on idiots. <laughs> now you're cancelled. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> oh my god, I I, I got to I, I I funny part is so okay. A little behind the scenes of last week's interview and show. So I I listened to the show, and I I'm obviously the producer of the show. I produce the show, but I don't really fully pay attention unless they tell me edit this out, please. So unless I'm told that, I don't fully. I want to listen to the whole show on Friday when it drops, like everybody else does. So I skimmed through it. I edited out one thing that's not on the show. I did edit something out. And then I got to the show, and I'm like, okay, that's not too bad. I really wasn't fully paying attention to everything that was said. But it's like, okay, that's not too bad. So I upload the show. It goes up Oops. Friday morning. It goes up Friday morning. And I'm listening to it while I'm working on Friday. And then I realized what I kept in. I don't regret a single thing. I don't regret a single <laughs> thing that what I kept in at all. I specifically asked you on Friday, after you heard... Did I go too far? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Not my opinion, at least. And I did get an outside opinion from someone who's not involved in the situation at all, like whatsoever. Just someone completely outside of the situation. He's even said if he's pissed about a podcast, that he has his own problems. <laughs> so, <laughs> I gave him a fellow friend, completely nothing to do with the conversation, nothing to do with the situation. So, in my in my defense or whatnot, I've also been banned from speaking about this person on podcasts. Oh, yeah. So, he actually also, said that to her. <laughs> also, let me say, what's up, Dennis? Ah. <laughs> God damn it. Just, just remember, this show does not have a guy with pressing the red button for every three seconds, just in case. I do not. This is a very, very, this show barely gets edited. This show does not even get edited much, honestly. <laughs> so, so is this like when, is this like when Howard Stern was trying to sue Opie and Anthony for mentioning his name on their show? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Except they haven't reason, mentioned the government name at all. And the only reason, the only reason they even had to stop doing it is because he went up in management. And that's the only reason they had to stop doing it. <laughs> he went above them. That's what happened there. So <laughs> I remember I was, I was sitting when all that went down. So that's why well, I <laughs> You know, some people have thick skins and some people have thin skins and some people just don't have brains where it should be because they're sitting on them. I will give you guys an exclusive as we did not record this week. I would like to say that I am sorry that my words were true and he couldn't handle it. Wow. But I still. What was that? And I hope he got his closure by doing. And then. And another one. So. You know, you can pop in my DMs again, but I will be deleting it. There you go. There you go. I have recently found that he's actually unblocked me from everything and is now looking at my Insta story. So it's, it, it, if you really want to follow my Insta story, it's podcast stuff, recently stuff about Ahsoka and all my workouts. So enjoy that in my Insta story right now. Enjoy it. Because it's nothing you want to look at. Trust what, me. What Bye. he's doing by that is he's kind of keeping tracks on things, I guess. Go right ahead. There's nothing in there that's that interesting. Trust me. I'm going to look quick. You continue, but I'm going to see if uh, he's continuing to spy. So, all right. Well, John, why don't you get your plugs in? Because I just realized we're still doing plugs. So, John, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, sure. No worries. Uh, I, I come from uh, podcasts as well. You probably know this by now. I've got many podcasts. Bat Minute, Miami Minutes, Hedvig, Inch by Angry Inch. You just just type them in. I don't care. Just just look them up. I'm on everything. Facebook, Instagram, uh, X. X. I'm not, I'm not X. calling it X. X. I, I'm X. not doing Twitter that. X. That's what I call it now. Twitter X. Twitter X. Uh, I've got threads, which everybody's abandoned already. We're on all of yeah. these things. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Very calm over there. I like it. I, 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 I love how social media has kind of morphed into other things that people are going, eh, I don't want this. Yeah, there's too no. many. There's too many. But but because I want to, you know, have the most reach with my show, I've got each of my shows is on all of those. So just mm -hmm. if you want to listen to my Bat Minute show, just type it into any of them. You'll you'll find it. It'll be there. And, 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 and coming soon, John Minute. Oh, well, don't tempt me. <laughs> if I could just talk about myself three days a week, five days a week or something, I'd be happy with that. <laughs> Do the Dinner Ladies Minute. 
<laughs> no, it happened on that. And it mostly did <laughs> Right. Our, our singer, Pete, did say to me once, like, why don't you do a podcast about the band? And it's like, Pete, what would it be about? What would you talk about? <laughs> like, <Man>. you. <laughs> I don't know. You're the only thing I could come up with was like interviewing him about the meaning of the songs or something. That's about it. Hey, hey, hey. All right. Well, let's, um, let's do this. It has been a few weeks since we've done this week in Lincoln's Natural History. Um, as a matter of fact, there is so much stuff that I had to condense it. I don't know if we'd be here for a while. But I think mm -hmm. the stuff that's actually important. Um, so this dates from August 4th, August 25th, because obviously we did not do a um I did not do this when we were at the con or anything. So here we go. Um, show history. First of all, August 17th, Sal, live recording. Shared Universe Studios with Ming Chen. That was exciting. Right. I can't believe that was so long ago already. <laughs> that was so that long. Was, that was the best our show ever sounded. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm not even offended. Um, and the following, <laughs> you and me did actually do another recording in um at the Homestead Suites at the hotel. Like the day after we did the recording with Ming, we did another recording. So we had a show the week after, so we didn't have to do a show when I got back. <laughs> so it's like back to back shows in Jersey, which is fun. Um. Some quick interviews on August 14th. I actually put an episode up, a double, a double interview, kind of across from all the podcasts that I did. One was Matt Doherty from um, The Mighty Ducks. Everybody from, listen, everybody from The Mighty Ducks. Jeff McCracken from Voyage of World, who was actually just recently on Pommy Troll. So that's interesting. That was fun. Uh, August 19th, 2015, I sat down with Ricky Briganti, formerly Inside the Magic. I actually just um just talked about him on Threads recently, because I actually missed Ricky Briganti. He no longer podcast, but I missed the guy. Um, oh. And um, August 23rd, 2019, I actually did a crossover episode with D5 with David Newman, the Mighty Ducks composer. That was a cool interview. That was a lot of fun. And then I remember on the D5 side, I um, actually did an extra show where he gave me the score, to the original Mighty Ducks that was never on a soundtrack. And I made an episode. Oh, really? out of it. And I made an episode out of it. So that was pretty cool on D5. So that was a cool, cool. thing. Thanks, awesome. Dave. Oh. All right. So that is that. <laughs> Let's hit this. And now, let's get into the crazy world of professional wrestling. All right. Um, we have a lot to get to, so I'm not going to spend too much time on the G1, even though it's about two weeks old now at this point. But um, if you didn't listen to the live show that went up last week um, from the con, I, um, I did make a quick blurb about the G1 and how annoyed I was about the semifinals. <laughs> um and then I didn't, I actually, going into the semifinals, because when we recorded, when we were doing the live show, it was the day before semifinals. So I didn't know the results. So those who missed it, um, Tenzin Naito is um, the G1 winner. He is facing Sonata in the main event at Wrestle Kingdom. Not going to bullshit everybody. I did not like the Final Four. I, I did not like the fact that they had it go with the normal standard people all the damn time when you teased us during the entire G1 with all these young stars and all these yeah. young guys. And the only young person who moved over was take a layout. And save at least Sean Umino. I didn't understand any of that. It pissed me off watching it to the point where I don't even think I actually watched the final. I, I don't think I did. I was so aggravated by the fact wow. that Naito and I love Okada. I was so aggravated by the final. I'm like, I don't, I, I, I have no energy left. I am exhausted from the con. I was hanging out with Mandy. We were watching High School Musical, the Musical Series instead. I, I did not care. I was done. Yeah, <laughs> I totally, I get that. Yeah, yeah it, it, it seemed like when it came to the final four it was kind of predictable, which means, you know, eh. Yeah, it really annoyed me. And I just wanted to get that out of my system. John, did you watch it all? I didn't watch it all. Uh, I watched bits and pieces. Like, I would love to watch it all, but it, it's, it's just so much. There's so much of it. Um, <laughs> the 20 elements of the block play was actually easier to watch. It would be easier, yeah. Tag but I, I was the same as you. Like, uh it's too obvious. It's it's all the names you would pick if you just looked at a piece of paper and went, yeah, yeah, him, him, him. Yeah, okay. It's like there's no thought put into it. It's the same people all the time. And what annoyed me was they didn't even have Osprey win. Like no. that the final last year, didn't even have him win this year. And that really annoyed me too. I'm like, oh my God. So, <laughs> I mean, here's the, if they think that Naito is going to win over Sonata, that's not happening. It might. Not, it might. Uh, not the way they've been giving a push to Sonata. I don't think so. At least not. Not right now. I agree. In the A block with all the young guys. And I didn't think he looked that great. I'm not going to bullshit you. I don't think he looked great. And I don't think it was right that he lost. He beat everybody in the A block. All the young and up and coming stars. And then lost the fucking evil. <laughs> God, that pissed me off. 
See, that's the thing. You, you've you got to at least, you know, you're writing this as a story. You, you should really be writing in at least one sort of new up-and-comer to reach the final. At least one. Maybe, Not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you have Sean Uno, who's supposed to be their shining star new up-and-comer. You, you have eight people you can move on to the quarterfinals. Have him go over! Like, it made yeah. no sense. It made no <laughs> sense to me. Crazy. And that's the thing, you know, with the people who re- reach the final, you know, like all of those people who got further and further, you're going to get a great match out of them. But that's not the yeah. problem. The problem is, well, we've seen those matches. Exactly. Exactly. It's annoying. <laughs> it's why they get done on my system because it's been bothering me and I haven't, we haven't torn a show in a couple of weeks. So I had to get that on my system. Do you feel better now? Um, not really, because the show still sucks. But anyway, um, <laughs> I feel like I wasted a month of my life with the G1 this year and that pisses me off. I- <laughs> I was about to ask that next question. You just answered it. So, better wasting a month than like twelve years. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. But you're not wrong. But nice segue. It's like I wasted a month of my life there. I was get over to the news and notes. There was a, a bunch of there's a little bit of stuff from each company to talk about here before we get to the main event here did of it, the show. Did it, did it, did it. And since I usually, we haven't done this in a long time, we're actually throwing it to Sal to read the news stuff because we used to do that all the time. And then Sal decided he didn't want to talk anymore. Well, Sal, oh, <laughs> that's you right. Oh, it's dead. <sighs> hey, listen, I got one of them Roman Reigns contracts now. I don't have to work that much anymore. <laughs> no, one told you do. <laughs> no one told me that. <laughs> this is basically me and my new job. I'm, I'm doing like half the work. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in WWE land, Edge wrestled what might be his final WWE match on SmackDown to celebrate his 25th anniversary on WWE and will soon be debuting on AEW as Corner. <laughs> hey, that's not happening. <laughs> not going to be debuting at Corner, first of all. Remember, to- <laughs> Corner or being in the Corner. Let me say something. First of all, I got to admit, what's funny about Friday's show, if you, if you told me about a year ago that we'd be doing the little of the episode of SmackDown would be surrounded around the 25th anniversary of Edge and LA Knight versus The Miz. I would never believe you. That's literally what the episode Friday was all about. That was it. There was really yep. going on. Was those... <laughs> but um, it worked. It really worked. The whole show was dedicated to Edge. They did like video packages and a fantastic montage. Like a fantastic montage for him. Um, And they ended up with a match between Edge and Shane. It's probably their first match ever. And it, it, the match did not disappoint. It was a great, great match. Um, um you, hey, what, have, what were your thoughts on the whole Edge ceremony throughout the night? It just felt like an ending. Like, it just felt like he was done in some capacity. And also, let it be known, Sal, he's not going to be corner. He's He needs a more badass name. Fringe. Oh. Hey, you're so gonna... you're, you're coming up with cool names. I thought they'd just be like Adam Edge. <laughs> Because you can get around it that way. Oh, which was his old Indian name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so is he going to like be tagging with Jey Uso? No, not that happening. Um, the one thing I will say, though, if... Okay, so the whole word is, apparently his contract expires officially next month. So for those saying, he's going to be in LA. He's going to be allowed. He can't do that. He can't do that legally. Um, let's just throw that out there right oh, now. Oh, man. Um, just throw that out there because I because trust me, a lot of people were thinking it. So the people that actually know what they're doing and looked up the research and his contract officially ends at the end of September. Oh, not gonna happen. It's just not not gonna happen. Um, but I will say though, I, I'm if I'm if I had a torn on it, but at the same time, I was torn on like Christian showing up on um AW TV and he turned into one of the biggest heels on the show. So it's one of I, the best things in AEW. Like, I didn't expect that when it happened. So, like, oh. who knows what they could do with Adam Copeland? Or... He's the TNT champion. Yeah, he That's is. right. You're exactly the, the best one. The best. <laughs> oh, don't say that to Christian. Wait, wait, wait. Who <laughs> oh, is Christian? Oh, wonder, like, the TNT championship is not on the line at all in. It's not going to be all out. So, that's not even on our show this week. <laughs> <laughs> like, I heard stuff with Edge that supposedly that they may try to do something with him as far as backstage and producing or even being a trainer for uh, if he, NXT? If he wants to. He's right. not fired. He'll be a free agent next month. And yeah. he's, um, isn't he, um, I just wonder if they think he's in the new Disney Plus um show. Oh, what was that? Yes. The new Disney Plus show I, that saw, he... I saw a picture. Yeah, I can't remember what the show was, though. 
from something about Percy Jackson and the Olympians. I think that's what it is. Yes, yes, oh, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, that's one. Yeah. That's oh, the one. They're going back to that, are they? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. For a picture of him, he literally put the picture up the day after yeah. the match. As like, this is what I'm doing now. This is the next thing yeah. I'm going to do. So yeah, going back to acting would be great for him. Great. I thought he's a great actor, so that should be intriguing. So I want to move on to our next story in WWE world. Uh, yes, uh, Lacey Evans announced that her WWE contract has expired and she will be debuting at AEW as Lacey <laughs> Glevins. Help yourself, can you? <laughs> you know? <Kazute>. No, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I know she went back to her like actual name on Instagram. I don't, I don't, really, I didn't really care when it actually happened. That's the funny part. Um, it was more on there because she was such a big deal on TV and we love making fun of her character and we love making fun of everything with her for the longest time on the show and we no longer have that. But um all seriousness, this is actually okay. And then I found out that like, everyone was like, she's gonna go to AEW. Number one, why no offense to AEW, but why would you want anybody you actually like to go to the AEW women's division right now? When they're barely pushing <laughs> that they have? <laughs> well that, to be fair to them, they're trying. Right? They they, they, they I, know. Are they? <laughs> it, it feels very much like a, a deliberate, like uh, trying to prove to people. Oh no, no, we we do right by our women. No, 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 we'll get to but the at the same show. time, they have at least put the women in the main event regularly. Yeah. Like, you tell, like, you tell me if that was before or after the sign that came up on the screen that said "push the women from um, push the women." <laughs> it it does feel a bit strange that it was immediately after that sign. <laughs> it's a little bit. <laughs> What a, sus, mean, little what, what, a, what a good fit for her to be in Ring of Honor. No, because that's AEW still. <laughs> I, I, I understand <laughs> that, but I mean to break her in. No one's watching, no one's watching her, Rach. Like, <laughs> no, no one's watching Collision? There's people that are watching Collision. More people are watching Collision than are watching Ring of Honor. <laughs> Ring of Honor. <laughs> Oops. To, to, to be fair, yeah, the Ring of Honor, I would watch it if I didn't have to get like some another subscription. You know, I've already got enough. I don't want to pay for another one. And you got Fight Plus. It has all the free, like, you don't pay for commercials. You don't do commercials on AWTV. So it's like... <laughs> exactly. So include it in, in the Fight TV, AEW Plus, and cool, I'll watch it. Or even if it's like a couple of extra books, that's fine. Just not the full, what is it, $10 or something? Like that. Something like that. Um, honey, any thoughts on the Lacey Evans situation as the female on this panel? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Dad brought up a point to me that he, she'd be great in NWA. Oh, I, yeah, I, she would. Actually, she would be great in NWA. Yeah. What, do you, yeah. what do you guys do? For me, because they're all Fox News, Bible something Republicans, <laughs> and she would be great there. Not wrong. Oh, oh no. Are See, that's the thing. Banning me from talking. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No, but, but, is she going to give him the woman's right then? <laughs> you can't do that. That's on my WWE. Uh, Wait, no, okay. no, 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 no. Gender <laughs> neutral, right? <laughs> in, in NWA, women aren't allowed to have rights. Oh! oh. 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 Smashing Pumpkins is not going to appreciate oh. that comment. Wait, who's Before that? I found out she was one Rashing of those pumpkins. people. Pumpkins? I, I, I quite pumpkins. liked her before I found out she was like a weird... Um, mm -hmm. How do I be polite? Uh, a weird... Person, you, right, right, right side, right ringer. Yeah, uh, being politically incorrect because that's my forte. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I like the Southern Belle character. I thought that was quite cool in NXT. I, and then I they agree. Yeah. I, I agree. I did like her. I like the idea of her, but she's just one of those people that is so opposite my viewpoint. She, yeah, she didn't yeah. get over. Is what it came down to. I think these Southern because we all figured out who she was. The Southern yes. Bell character actually was working. That actually worked for a little. The Marine character, Southern Bell character, the original Southern Bell character. I think that worked really well. It was yeah. great. It was great. A little bit. What it was, and then it was something that we had never seen before. Yeah, and tried to change it. Tried to change it, and I thought they bringing her daughter in. I think that was actually pretty smart for the character. And then they changed, and then she got pregnant. They tried to blame Ric Flair, and then she was. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think forgot about I forgot about that too. <laughs> Wherever she pops up at, I think her new persona should be some bad biker chick. Funny part, I forgot about that too until I heard about it on the podcast. And then I think, oh yeah, I forgot that happened. I forgot about that. <laughs> and then we had to hear about her life story for some reason. 
anything whatsoever. And then we throw her what three times, and then Triple H obviously doesn't like her. She never had television. Yeah. She was never. Uh- so, and then we found out that she thinks autism isn't real and things like this. <laughs> yeah. I love it all. Wow. Did she say that? She actually yeah. said that. Oh, no. She put it on social media. Oh, oh no. Happened. <laughs> well, least... fuck her then. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, she isn't real. If she... that's the case, let me allow my child to not take medication. And I will hand him over, and she can have him for one day, and then I will <laughs> hey, say that ADHD is real. You give her a morning. <laughs> <laughs> and she probably really, thinks really COVID nineteen is just a bad case of the flu. Oh, I guarantee she thinks. Really, that. Yeah. really concerned. I can give her my husband when he's off of his meds too. <laughs> Nobody wants. That. Nobody wants that. Not even I want that sometimes. Uh, <laughs> All right, um, let's jump over to AW. We're gonna spend the rest of the day over at AW. Um, Sal, back back to you. Uh, yes, uh, Cash Wheeler turned himself in on August seventeenth for allegedly pointing a gun in the direction of another driver in a road rate incident on July twenty seventh. I'm still having issues with the fact that he turned his head on the seventeenth for something happened on the twenty seventh. <laughs> I'm having issues with that personally. I'm still having a problem with that one. There's, I don't know if you, you saw, but the video of his arraignment with his attorney. Oh, his, <laughs> his attorney got the bail set to twenty five hundred. That we knew. That we knew. Yeah. And the judge's own two two criteria were he can't have any contact with the victim and the victim's family, Duh. and he has to surrender all his firearms to law enforcement. Oh, that's fair, at least. Uh, but they did not take his passport. And Tony Khan made it very clear that match is still happening on Sunday. On Sunday. So, <laughs> I am surprised by that because I'm not saying it's right or wrong or anything. I'm just surprised because I would have thought if you're in the middle of something like this, that's like a a condition is like you can't leave the country and i would imagine our country would say no don't come in here <laughs> you know oh no that's only when your last name is uso oh <laughs> actually, Seriously, i'm really sorry guys i don't know what it is <laughs> actually no i'm gonna make a bad point to you actually that's a good point because the usos are allowed in the uk but they're not allowed in canada yep that's true yeah yeah well, it depends on the country so like they may have different rule. I don't know. What, I don't know what it is, John. Uh, you tell us because you're there. Like when it comes to this kind of stuff, I know. Like apparently, if you're a, if you're a drunk driving record, apparently you're allowed in the UK, but you can't go into Canada. There so, are certain. It depends what you've done. Um, like I mean, notorious, famous drunk driver Matthew Broderick is allowed to visit here in Ireland. So <laughs> you know, I mean, he killed people, and he's still allowed in. So. <laughs> like, oh, jeez. <laughs> But no, um, it's a bit of a strange one. You know what? I'll find out for you because I now work for basically a division of the border of people, like you know, mm-hmm. allowing people in and giving them uh, visas and passports and things. So I will find yeah. out for you. Wonderful. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. I, I, Jason Powell made a point um, on one of his podcasts this week that um, Cash does not have any um, previous offense of any kind, so that might work in his favor. And it's right. also not a domestic abuse that also might work in his favor. Yeah. So, and also the yeah. guy was hurt. The guy that allegedly wasn't hurt, also wasn't hurt. So those things might work in his favor. Because, like, uh, over here, we just assume that this is a daily occurrence in America. Ah. It pretty much is. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. usually death involved. And oh. Uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> what, what, what he's being accused of is considered a third class felony. But he's, it, yeah, it's a third class felony, but he's being accused of it. He hasn't been sentenced. And he hasn't been convicted of it. And that's the whole thing until it plays out totally. You're not going to know what's going to happen. But Tony says, as far as it is right now, he says it's on a day to day basis, but the match is still on. I know. Yeah. We did. Well, we'll get to everything. We'll get to all in in a couple of minutes. Yeah. Yeah, Wait, we- do you think that's why? Do you think that's why it took so long to turn himself in? Do you think they've they planned it? Like, okay, if you turn yourself in, it won't all be processed and, and dealt with until after the show. Um, that's a good question that I don't <laughs> know the answer to. That's a very good question. I mean, it's their question to ask. 
That's a very fair question to ask. It, it It's probably a possibility because if you look at the timeline, I mean, if they do, if he would turn himself in sooner, then there's been more of a possibility to basically get a, you know, a speedy court date, a speedy trial and whatever. But now yeah. that he's got this hanging over his head, as long as he comes back for his court date, he's all fine. If I'm yeah. there in the Jeff Hardy situation, there's no such thing as a quick court date. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was still dealing with shit from 2021, two months ago. So I... Yeah. So, like, there's no such thing as a quick court date when it comes to situations like this. No. Same over here. No, there's no way. It it it, it takes a it takes a while. So I'm thinking, like, leave it as long as possible, and then turn yourself in, and it'll be all right. <laughs> the show that you're on, it won't affect the show, which we'll go to right now. So since um, they didn't actually give a theme song for um, AW All In this year, I went back to the original All In hey. and found the theme music for that. And that's um, Downstate All In, same band that does Cody's music, um, does the song All In. So I figured, why not break that out for this? For all oh, time. Yeah, bit yeah. of nostalgia. You know, I was just looking over the original card and I completely forgot Rey Mysterio was involved. In the main event! He's <laughs> in the main event! <laughs> How did I not remember that? <laughs> I mean, isn't it like is it like the golden elite versus like the um versus like um it was it was like the bucks and kota bushi against like um bandito Rey mysterio and um i forget the, who the last person was but like that was, was it was it penta oh no penta was against kenny on that okay show. Penny was, against, Penny was against Kenny. Oh, it was Ray Phoenix. It was Ray Phoenix. That was it. Doesn't it, was, it feel like it was about 20 years ago? That was the main event of original of all it. Like, <laughs> that's crazy. I don't even remember Ray Mysterio being on that show. Yeah, he, yeah. That, I remember because the, the whole crowd went nuts when it was Coda versus Ray in the ring for the first time ever. Like, I remember, like, that's insane. What do you think of that? yay. And now he's a bad father. <laughs> and now his son went to jail and everything. It's like one of the best <laughs> television right now. <laughs> you know what? I don't watch much WWE, but I don't care. I still stand dirty dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and Rhea. Rhea. <laughs> and mommy. Of course, and of mommy. Mommy and yeah. <laughs> Whenever they're on the screen, there should just be like a caption underneath me that just says bisexuality intensifies. Yeah, that the whole <laughs> faction. It's just like a it's like a queer polycule. <laughs> exactly, but there is that, that one video of Rhea and Dom where she's like, like the hand, hand thing. The hand thing. I'm just like, <laughs> let's just say my ovaries exploded. Let's just say that. <laughs> but I love about that of that that video. It came up day after um, Rhea got engaged. Which I love. <laughs> <laughs> she knows she what knows, she's that's, doing. That storyline. I, I don't believe that part. <laughs> yeah, he, well, well you know like Rio always says mama's on top yeah. mommy mommy's on top <laughs> well she's on top all right <laughs> well right, let's get to all in all right um so as of now this number could go up i just sort of actually this sort of something apparently if you count u.s sales apparently we're over ninety thousand tickets according to something i just saw online a minute ago but i'm not sure how accurate that is if you count U.S. sales. Wait, not, what do you mean U.S. sales? The people bought tickets in the U.S. that are flying out and they didn't count them in the original number? <laughs> really? That's what, weird. What? Why would they not count them? What the hell? For something literally a minute ago. I'm not even sure where I saw it. I can't even like vouch for it. Like, it just for pop-up and I was looking for something else. So, okay. might be more than this, but as of when they talk, as of Wednesday, last Wednesday show, it was at 80,846, which is more than WrestleMania 32, the biggest show in um, wrestling history. That wasn't papered like a couple of Korea shows. I don't count this. They're not counting the Korea. How, so, how many, how many seats does the uh, stadium have? Ninety thousand, I think. So, like, it's, okay. it's around that. It's it's under a hundred thousand, but it's over ninety. Okay. It's, it's yeah. like in in between the two. We're gonna have a fucking crazy crowd on Sunday. Yeah, that's all I know. <laughs> but it is the biggest paid attendance in wrestling history. And they worded that way on purpose because of the fact that there's a couple of Korea shows that apparently have like 100,000 in WCW history, but they don't count those because they weren't paid. So That's a difficult one for me because <laughs> obviously this is in my country, so I'm so happy. Yeah, it's great. 
But is it fair to discount the Korean shows, really? I don't know. Yeah. If you look at these, weren't they like forced up against their will to go? <laughs> like, Apparently, they were very confused. A lot of people in the crowd were like, what the hell is this? Based on the <laughs> that I watched, it, the people did not know what the hell is going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think they've ever seen people before, you know. <laughs> so it, I'd be confused, too. It's turning out to be a very interesting show. <laughs> All right, um, so let's get into the card. We're not going to talk about the um, the zero one match, the EM um, zero one match until later because they have to do with the main event. So we'll get to the, the, we'll get to that. Um, let's get to the actual main show so far. So we have a CDM Stampede match. Apparently, this match is already changed. We're, okay, so before I begin, we are doing this on Wednesday afternoon. Obviously, the show airs on fr- post on Friday, so anything that's announced on Dynamite will not be a part of this. Um, because I were feeling there's going to be a couple of announcements. And we, by the way, we I'm saying that. We already have nine matches announced. <laughs> and you know there are going to be more. You know there will oh, be more. Because yeah. so... AW pay-per-views are already about goddamn five hours long. And this is the biggest one ever. They're probably going to do another <laughs> hour. <laughs> I, I'm so... I'm, and John, no, no offense because you're watching it obviously in prime time for you. For us, it's on... For, the, for us, it's central time zone. It starts at like noon. And I'm loving the fact that this if this show goes like eight hours, it'll then go into prime time for us and we can go watch like worse cooks. Yeah. <laughs> it'll mean nothing to you. This is I can't even say now you know how I feel because you've still got it great. It's still in the <laughs> middle of the day. Not fair. Then again, we all in this country, uh, except for like nurses and doctors and things, we all have Monday off. Not because of AW. We just it's a it's a national holiday on Monday. So it's, I don't care. This can go at any time. No. I, I'm not bothered. What is the holiday? I heard of that on different podcasts. What's the holiday? Uh, well, it's not over here. We don't necessarily have specific ones. We sometimes do. It's just called a bank holiday. Basically, the government just decides like so many times a year. What is it like eight times a year? Like, oh, by the way, you get a Monday off. And it's called that because the banks are closed. And it's so, because of AW. You're welcome. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wonderful. Wow. Let's go. The Stadium Stampede. So this is the match that's currently on board. Um, first of all, Ray Phoenix has been pulled from the show because of a visa issue. So he will not be here. Um, that's number oh, one. Oh, no. We'll get pulled. I got announced late on Tuesday. So that's number we'll one. We'll get pulled. Ray Phoenix. He will not be on this. Okay. That uh, is a real shame. I was looking forward to that. But, I, yeah. you know, I, I've worked in the visa department before. I know how... It, in the blink of an eye, there can be a problem. They could have been planning this and had everything submitted, and then at the last second, it's like, oh, by the way, no, you've screwed up. <laughs> Oops. So, okay, well, here's the match that is announced as of now. Um, it is Eddie Kingston, um, AW champion Orange Cassidy. It is the best friends Chuck Taylor and Temperetta, Pento Zero and Zero Mano, and then over on, on the other team is Blackpool Combat Club, John John Moxley, the Ring of Honor World Champion Claudio Castagnoli. And Will Yuta and three wrestlers to be named later. I have zero clue who these three wrestlers are going to be. Uh Let's start, because I see your hand raising. Um I read someplace, and don't quote me on this, but supposedly remember uh two guys that were aligned with K- Eddie Kingston a while back? The Tanner and Ortiz? I heard they weren't cleared yet. Supposedly, I heard that basically. I heard it wasn't clear yet. Okay, because I heard that they had they were supposed to go to a previous. But but why would they go against Eddie? Because babies, they can do the. You didn't write. You didn't call. You didn't send me anything. You didn't care. That's not believable, with Eddie. Though that's not believable, like at all. <laughs> like I, I personally can see like Shona Umino being a part of this. Um. Maybe bring in um, maybe no, Ishii and like uh, maybe Lance Archer because he's not doing anything right now. <laughs> he's not doing anything. So maybe no. it's, it's the team is throwing together. That's one of the people I can really think of on the top of my head, John. Or are we going to get some like some British wrestlers maybe thrown in there? I can't think who it would be though. This is the thing because a lot of a lot of wrestlers from here end up on AEW anyway. So uh... how about the Vaughn villains? I heard they're back together. I did... Apparently they are. Yeah. They're, they're doing a show um in I want to say in Seahawk in like in like New York, um oh. that's so they wouldn't be available. <laughs> I 
I would love it if there were some some staples of the British indie wrestling scene who showed up, but I can't imagine. I mean, it that would, would be make big sense. enough. Yeah, but would would it be important enough to keep it a surprise? Like, oh my god, this person really... you only know if you watch like ICW or something. You know? Wait, <laughs> surprise? Because they haven't announced it yet on Dynamite that we haven't seen yet. That's the thing. That's the problem. Like, it it, it might just be someone like Robert Brookside for all we know. And like it's something That'd be cool, yeah. like but we don't know because they haven't announced it yet. It's as simple as that. I mean, I'm I'm like, very surprised there's no. Um, I'm not saying it's going to be him because it wouldn't be that shocking. I'm surprised there's no Kip Sabian on this. Um, good question. I don't know. Maybe he's hurt again. I don't know. Maybe he's hiding with a box in his head again. I don't know. <laughs> I but, I think he's all right. I think he's healthy. Like. He's on Ring of Honor and nobody's watching that. I have no idea. <laughs> give him a give him a match. Come on, it's the UK. I keep I seeing people say, "Why don't they get pay?" I was gonna say Paige. Why don't they get uh, Soraya's brother to have a match? It's like, well, because oh, there you go. What do you mean, but even over here, nobody really knows him. So yeah. Oops. <laughs> Devon and Bob Bubba Ray. All right. Well, let's actually let's actually now figure out who's winning this thing. Um, honey, you haven't said much. What are your thoughts on who's winning the stadium champion match? I feel like at this point, Blackpool Combat Club needs it a little more only because I feel like their momentum has kind of been on the decline. Yeah, it's just kind of, it's just not there. Um, But honestly, I, I do feel like it's going to be up to who these mystery people are. True. That's a really good point. So are you going with um, Blackpool for now? Tentatively. Fair enough. Um, John, what do you think? Exactly the same. It depends on who these mystery people are. They'll be the deciders. But going off what we know, I would say Blackpool Combat Club. I mean, it, it helps them reestablish themselves after their loss to the elite and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah. BCC. And, I mean, they're, they're facing essentially glorified jobbers. I hate to say it. Like, I just... The fix in and Karen Cassidy, who's like the hottest person on the company right now when it comes to win. <laughs> yeah, but he's not defending his belt. This is the exactly. thing. Exactly. Very, very true. I feel like Orange Cassidy by himself is one entity, but then when you include him with uh, Chuck and Trent, I think that kind of gives him a whole different identity. True. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Yeah, I'm Blackpool Combo. I think they're going to win this thing too. Sal, what do you think? Um, just to be different, I'm going to say the opposite. I'm saying that they're going to lose, and maybe we can get some rumblings of a breakup because they don't need to be together anymore. Oh, how dare you? How dare you? You're asking that? Um, I'm going to go along the same lines as Sal is, is basically because after, since Daniel is gone, he was like the heart of the Blackpool Combat Club, and now without Daniel, there's like no direction. Everyone's kind of going like Ryan. their own kind of way, and they may bump into each other, but there's no direction. I mean, if you really want to give them a big push and m- maybe put them in like contention for the trios title, oh. this may be the way to do it. But I don't see that happening. All right, I might think I just thought of something for the person to replace Ray Phoenix, Danhausen. Oh yeah. <laughs> Like, did he break his leg? I thought he was cl- cleared. I, I, I think I, he might be. But I saw him, and when I when I saw pictures of him recently, he still had a cast on his leg. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, oh no! Like he broke his leg. I know, like he broke his leg earlier in the year when I saw him hit two e two. He was he had a cast on. Okay. You know, was also in April, but like I'll do a little investigative research. There you go. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Also, you're talking about. Uh, Brian, like he's dead. <laughs> like he'll never return again. Or, like Brian he, is no longer with us. It is weird that he doesn't, even though he's injured. Like, why doesn't he just come out with the group? Um, that's a good question. Maybe well, depends what, what. I remember the injury was really bad, so maybe he's just taking some time to rest. And right. maybe I heard that uh, Bree is pregnant again. That I did not hear. Oh. If she is, that's interesting. Okay. And John that's- Cena's the father. Here, oh, to, no. to, quote, to quote one Danhausen on X, 
Hello, I am injured. I will not be at Wembley. Go enjoy the wrestlers who are not injured that are at the show that have worked very hard to help make this happen. I am not at Wembley. I am not at Wembley. I am not at Wembley. I am going to be, be there. <laughs> that means there you go. I am injured. Yay, Yay, he's one of the people. That's confirmed. <laughs> Oh, well, this is a weird thing with AEW. The only time they have gone against it was last time with Danhausen, right? When someone's injured, they just disappear. It's like you can still use them in stories. They can still come out and do stuff. That's true. I mean, you're absolutely right. <laughs> so, all right, let's move on. We have um, a championship that's not even real, but it's the next match. It's the <laughs> but I'm, quote, excuse, roll- excuse me while I roll my eyes. Yes, it yeah. is. Real world champion. By the way, so I just want to clarify this. If you ask Ian Rick and Bonnie, Kevin Kelly, or Nigel McGuinness, the commentary yeah. on on um, on um collision, this is not a real championship at all. If you ask them, if you ask the Rick announcers, this is a real title. <laughs> a real title ever defended, well, that's, well, that's how the FTW title started out. It was supposed to just be like a stupid little thing, and then they actually decided, hey, we're going to start defending the title. What's funny about that is that it's still technically not under like AEW banner, but it's been in and Jack Perry had the belt now. Like it's so stupid. It's so no, weird. but that that's why I like it, and that's why that works. Whereas this is just like it it does I'm not saying this is the truth, but it feels from the outside perspective like it is just that they're, they're doing it to just keep CM Punk happy. Oh, here you go, you've got a belt. It's CM Punk versus <laughs> match. It's CM Punk versus Samoa Joe. For the- I have zero problem with this match. I actually love this matchup. I love yeah. the tournament. I love the fact we're doing it again. I have no problem with the match. Why is he defending a championship? It's not even real. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't even care. They're just carrying the belt around. I don't even care about that. Like it's literally to a Pung MJF match finally. I understand that completely. But why do they have to defend it? <laughs> that is the problem I can pop up with here. <laughs> again, I don't mind the defense of it, but what you what's weird is this is a heel move. A heel goes around saying, I'm the champion, when you're not the champion. But they're not presenting him as a heel. Samoa <laughs> Joe's the heel. <laughs> it's bizarre. Yeah, Christian, exactly. <laughs> he's not the champion. He's saying he's the champion. See, it's a heel thing. Actually, if you're asking what city you're in, it depends on the heel or not. <laughs> and then you get people online I've seen saying, oh, yeah, but he never lost it. It's like, he was stripped of it. That counts. That's the same thing as losing it. <laughs> thing is hurt. And he had it like the first, like the first time, or they did an interim championship thing, and then they did the unification match. That all at least makes sense. It's very, it's very something AEW does. But he, yeah. was, like John, you just said he was stripped of it because he was suspended. Yeah. <laughs> Which I again think... would be great if he was acting as a heel and like, no, 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 I am the champion. You know. <laughs> I think this should be a title for title match. Well, the real world championship belt against the ROH television championship belt. This be a ring of honor championship match. Make it a title match, and actually Joe might actually win. Because the way this is going, there's no way Joe can win this match. No, no way. There's zero chance. They're uh, they're not going to let Punk look bad. That's the whole thing. Yeah, um, he, so- he does a well enough job of that on his own. He doesn't need help. <laughs> it's it's the same Punk a weird thing because like. And, and like, like John said, he's a heel. In the day, he is a heel. And if he was a heel, if we were all about Chicago, I'd understand it. Because again, it worked for MJF, where he was a heel, <laughs> player, but on Staten Island or Long Island. Like, I understood that. That made sense to me. But like, Punk is somehow a babyface. I have no idea. And I like Punk. Don't get me wrong. I like the guy, but I don't like him here. I don't understand why he's a babyface at all. I don't understand. No. I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, and I'm someone. I, I am sitting in front of I bought the t-shirt on the on when he came to AW. I bought that t-shirt day one. I've got it behind me right now. I have it upstairs. But I'm just sick of it now. I'm sick of the whole thing. Just just I, I don't care. <laughs> so I mean it's all just your green that Punk's winning this match with this be honest here. Yeah, yeah. Around Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, 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 will this be a potential squash match? No, no, it's gonna be a really good match. I think it's gonna be a hell of a match. There's gonna be their match. I think they're matching the tournament. Was great. It was just too short because of the tournament match. I think this match can go a while and have a lot of fun with it. They have great chemistry. So like, I have zero problem with that. No, like, I would want Samoa Joe to win this match so bad. But he won't. <laughs> but the powers that be are, aren't going to let it happen because they don't want to piss off 
Warner Brothers Discovery or whatever. I, I think it is Warner Brothers Discovery. I think it's all punk. I think this is all punk. Honestly. He's the guy that just much creative control. He's kicking people out of the building. <laughs> even if he doesn't. I thought, though, I thought he was he just doesn't. being a regular douchebag, but you know. <laughs> Daniel, but he, but that, not to show up because he does, punk doesn't like it. Take the head of creative. <laughs> That's crazy. That is crazy. But even if well, he doesn't he do have that, that kind with, of power, um, like it doesn't make sense story wise, right? You wouldn't. Why would he lose now? And yeah, is Punk a good wrestler? Yes. Is he the best in the world? Absolutely not. Should he have nearly as much power as he's been given? No. And that is Tony Khan's fault because Tony doesn't like to put his foot down and he wants to make everyone happy. So instead of pissing off all the parties involved, he let Punk take his little ball over to Collision and do what he wants. This is literally Tony Khan creating a monster and now all of us have to deal with it. Agree. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah you, you are correct because if Tony I... would have had some cojones, he would have basically told punk bless you give me give me that belt it's not recognized you can't carry it again this is what you're gonna do i actually have no pro- again i think the storyline of him having the belt is not a bad storyline whatsoever especially if it's leading to all out and having cm punk versus mjf all out or mjf or adam cole whatever champion is if that's what it's leading to i understand that and that's a great that's an old school rick flair like storyline that, that's old school i didn't say that story Correct. It's defending the belt makes no sense. <laughs> so my thing would be this. I mean, they did it with, with CM Punk and Ricky Starks. My thing is, so now do you count that as a title defense or do you not count it as a title defense? No, not a title. Not a real title. That's At this a... point, he literally has a replica. Pretty much. I understand that. Oh, wait, sorry. Think... He has a replica with spray paint on it because we're bringing back the NWO bullshit from the... <laughs> Early 2000s. I do yeah. like the way but, but it's, it's got an X on sound. it. Yeah. <laughs> think about that, actually, honey. What's funny is that that's actually technically the original belt. Yes. But as a member, MJF has a new belt. He has a new belt. He's the a triple B. B. The so, triple B. Technically. So, all right, let's move on to other things. Um, apparently, a lot of people apparently missed that this match was a coffin match until Wednesday, even though they announced it like two weeks ago. But apparently, it was missed by a lot of people. Yeah, I how forgot. do you do a tag team coffin match? Um, we'll find out on Sunday. Apparently, <laughs> yeah. okay. Alan, is it two in the same coffin or individual there, coffins? Like no, a double one in the same coffin. In the back before we're talking about the match, guys. It like, is Alan and and Sting versus the Moral Agency, Story of Strickland and AR Fox in a coffin match. By the way, why Nick Wayne is not in this match? I had zero clue because they're fighting over the pride of Nick Wayne, and I would think he's okay because he wrestled on Wednesday. <laughs> because isn't isn't you Nick Wayne's match on zero hour? No, there's no matches on zero hour except for the one that we're getting to a little while. <laughs> I I think they just, and I don't mean this as an insult to Nick Wayne because I love him. I've watched him in GCW and everything. I think they maybe just thought this is too big a stage for you at this point. We can't have you in the match. They should have maybe come up with an injury angle or something to take him out of it. Well, they did. Then he mm-hmm. wrestled. Yeah, they but wrestled. he was fine, as you said. Yeah, he's fine. We just saw him wrestle. Hey. Uh, is, is there a possibility that maybe Nick Wayne would get over way too over and be more popular than Darby? No, I don't think so. I think actually, I like Darby. I like Darby. I like the like third generation thing we're doing here, where Sting was the mentor for Darby, and now Darby's the mentor for Nick Wayne. Right. Yeah. I like that a lot. I actually like so that. Does that make Nick Wayne Darby's or er, Sting's grandson? <laughs> well, he's young after that. I'm some my face own pain. grandpa. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, what if what if they have Nick Wayne do the run in for I, something in this match? Hundred percent be Nick Wayne helping. There's, the, there's two things here that for me is obvious. Darby Allen never loses coffin matches, and Sting doesn't lose. So, <laughs> right. and you can Take you have the WWE. Mogul Embassy lose. The Mogul Embassy losing is fine, you know. Exactly, and nobody's getting pinned. So, like, <laughs> like I can see like Nick Way popping out of the coffin or something and helping him under like doing something like that. I can totally see that happening. That'd be great. Hey, honey. Just blame it on Air Fox. Okay. Honey. Also, so I, I can't get over this. How are they going to do this? Like, do both of them have to be in the same coffin? Do they get side by side coffins? Do the I think it's a double wide. Both, both, both of them are in the same coffin. 
Well, you, you could do it like this. elimination. Like you put them in a coffin, and then that person's removed, and then there's another coffin forever. For forever. <laughs> like, do we put them in a crypt? <laughs> You should explain any of this. Like, I hope they explain this going into Sunday. They don't explain any of this. All right. And then are they going to get like a padlock and rule them out someplace or what? <laughs> and also, are we going to take bets on whether or not Prince Nana goes in the coffin too? <gasps> That'd be amazing. No, Nick Wayne takes care of Prince Nana. There you go. <laughs> I love how I've just gotten into the fact that you guys just say Prince Nana like it's normal. <laughs> well, like they did before. Na 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 na. Hey hey, bye bye. <laughs> happened, honey. That's what happened. You think that one happened? So, well, what about that meme that John shared about um, unhinged uh, Paul McCartney going into his ninth <laughs> hour of thinking the na 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 part of Hey Jude? <laughs> it's still going on to this day. <laughs> <laughs> More that or Ryan Gosling singing Push? Oi. So sorry, I just I'm just over this whole like AI singing thing. Hey, We're I am Kenoff, okay? You need him. You are Kenoff. You're definitely Kenoff. Yes, you are Kenoff. Okay. Anyway, you um, and Prince Nana are Kenoff. So much like the last <laughs> are we all just in agreeing that Darby is singing winning this thing? Yeah, yeah yes, pretty much. Yes. There, it's, it's, it's gonna be a double line. If you line. name the show, if you name the show Prince Nana is Kenoff. I'm writing that down right now. <laughs> I'm, that down. Uh, I'm with you though, but I mean, I I have finally started caring about the Mogul Embassy. Finally, they're interesting to me, but they're not going to win. I'm just uh, I, I, I I am excited. Sheesh. <laughs> and the baseball bat will come into play. Oh yeah, yes. yeah. All right, let's move on to a match that people. This match is pissing off people a lot, not because of the match, but because Kenny Omega is not a singles match, and it's a good enough. Uh, it is Kenny Omega, Hey Man, and Hey Dan, Kota Ibushi versus um versus um Kenoshik, Kesta and Bullet Club Gold, Rock Hard, Juice Robinson, and Jay White, and probably Jay White's some cut out figure they've been carrying around on collision lately with with Don Callis. By the way, Sal, actually you missed you on collision. Jay White is literally right now walking around. He was off for a week, and um and the guns brought out this like massive like those on massive like cardboard. One of those cardboard things of him because he wasn't there that week. And now it's just yeah. become part of the thing where he's like high fiving himself now. It's, it's becoming that. <laughs> it's in the faction. Card, it's, at, it's at ringside. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> picture, you see this thing standing in the corner. It's so fucking funny. And, and okay. just remember, we, get, we got two words for you guns up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that next time Sal's not around, that you just open a Zoom window with him in it. <laughs> kind of like that. That is so tense. <laughs> but um, anyway, so this is the match. A lot of people are aggravated because Kenny Omega's not in a single match on this show. I honestly don't care either way. Um, I think this match is going to be a lot of fun and energetic. Um, I can see people's point, though. Unless you're leading to Omega and Takesha at all out. Maybe they're saving that match for there. That could be possible. But um, The following week? Yeah, exactly. It's a problem. But yeah. um, I'm leading towards Golden Elite. It's only because they did not win at they they need to win another match and it, it, they don't want Kenny Omega and Kota Bushi losing here. I guess it's the only reason I'm leaning towards it. John, John, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying I think Golden Elite are gonna gonna win this one surely, but it could set up a, a thing with Takeshita. Um, I have really started liking uh, Juice. I saw someone online call him the 2023's version of Macho Man. And ever since then, that's how I'm kind of reading his promos. I'm like, yeah, that's a bit macho, man. Yeah. Have, that rock hard, rock hard dude, Robinson, is a completely different. Is, he's doing his own show. Like, he's just there. Yeah. I don't even like my favorite part. Like, okay, this one is out there. The, you, know, you know how the guns have their awesome. I love the guns' entrance where, like, the camera spins around them and they go around in the circle. I love that. Really cool. And they had a match. It was the guns and um, Juice Robinson and Juice hamming it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the entire night like i openly laughed <laughs> it was so <laughs> he's bringing back the spirit of cocaine to wrestling that we used to have you know? <laughs> yes <laughs> yes i'm i'm just gonna put this out there that between rock hard juice robinson and whatever tony storm is doing right now yes they yes. have got to be the most interesting wrestling couple Ever right now. Or pair them, pair them up on screen. Okay. Oh, yeah, my God. Second. 
Is, is Tony that Storm there needs to be a dare program? <laughs> is, 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 is Tony Storm doing like some sort of boudoir photography thing where she's got that <laughs> robe on all the time or what? No, I feel Come like on. she's doing like a Marilyn Monroe like broken Hollywood starlet kind of a thing. We'll get into that more when we get to women's Hollywood, but I am literally loving her story. Her, her, her okay, this of like it all. We'll get to more okay. to it in a few. Um, so uh, honey, why don't you go? Who's winning this match? Okay, so I do have one legitimate question. Is it still considered the Golden Elite, even though the Young Bucks aren't part of it? Yes, because the Golden Lovers, it's um Omega and Ibushi, and apparently, and, and Hangman's part of the Elite. So there you go. I think it's, it's any pairing of the Golden Lovers and another Elite member. That, that's how it works. Is that kind of like free bird rules, or what? I know. Here, the Elite. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, I'm just wondering, because otherwise, I would say it's like the Golden Lovers with the cowboy threesome kind of a thing going on. Like, <laughs> oh, threesome. Okay. No. <laughs> oh, we don't know. We don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what they do. Like, I, I, are, you, are you watching that show with Thunder Down Under or what? <laughs> I, was an old I, did, I honestly had no clue what was going to come out of your mouth after <laughs> you watched that show. I was terrified <laughs> for what was going to come out of your mouth. <laughs> Because I've I've loved uh... at the same time I was prepared to say yes because chances are I probably what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've loved terrifying the phobes whenever the golden lovers came up and they you'd get people in the comments on Facebook being like, Oh, that that name sounds weird. That sounds that sounds gay and I'll be like, Well look Oi! at this picture of the two of them then. <laughs> well, welcome Captain <laughs> Avius. Billy and Chuck walked. So that the golden lovers could run. Yes. Let's be serious. <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna be more clips from this episode than I've had in it. It's like honestly. <laughs> anyway, back to the original question. I think, I think yes, the golden lovers are going to win, and it's going to set up Omega Takeshita. Okay, fair enough. Sal, go ahead. <laughs> but that was a very interesting way of getting there. <laughs> Um. Yeah, I mean, if you don't have Kenny Omega win in front of three hundred million people, I, I think it's going to be bad. So I think the Golden Elite is going to win. Fair enough. Um, Dad, round is out. Ooh. I'd say the Golden Elite is going to win because if you don't, you're going to have ninety thousand people at Wembley Stadium that's going to riot. But oh, so wait, do British people actually riot? Or is it kind of like them just going like, oh, excuse me, sorry. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, can, at you. I can answer your question. I can answer your question right there. Ever watch a soccer game where their team is losing? I guarantee you, watch the stands. It's a freaking riot. At, to, to answer your question, no, I've never watched a British soccer game. I've watched a British football game. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I can let oh. him off. It's fine. But you know what? You're You're absolutely right. I mean... I the only time I have been it I wasn't part of it as such but I was in the vicinity of a bar fight was when Liverpool won and the fans still went crazy they 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 were the winners and there was still a fight <laughs> Oh that happens here all the time that's called that's called that's called a that's called a Saturday in Florida but it's, like, it's like the equivalent of like a midwestern riot where we're just like oh sorry up, up, up. <laughs> Oh, like, yeah, we'll, we'll give you some cheese curds. This this featured a guy getting smashed in the face with a bottle. <laughs> you know what's funny about that is that one by cheesing. First time I remember uh, we, were, we when Mandy came out to New York for the first time, and because there's a politeness out here, and I'm in New York mode, I, I hadn't moved out here yet, so I'm not. I'm not like now. I've been indoctrinated to like the um, Midwest way of things. At the time, I was a New Jersey boy, and I'm used to just being rude. <laughs> and, it. and she's like apologizing him as we're walking around New York City. Yeah, I'm like, oh, excuse me, oh, excuse me. He's like, just walk. And he's like dragging me. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. There I, you I, do it. I think but over here. Just if, like if... the, oh, excuse me, in Jersey, people look at me like, where the fuck are you from? <laughs> <laughs> no, right. I reckon there would be a riot if they lost. I mean, the. There's a lot of fans of uh, the elite and stuff here. I mean, obviously, there's fans of Bullet Club, but elite come from that. But I, I don't know. I think in this scenario, if Kenny Omega isn't winning, <laughs> well, uh, that being said, let's segue to another match that may cause a riot if it doesn't happen. If the result, 
that happens the way I think it will is Chris Jericho presented with Fozzie's live entrance, by the way. That had, that was announced by Jericho yesterday that he's going to be doing his own entrance. Great. Doing his... That is the most Chris Jericho thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, 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 before you continue, is this going to be like when Booker T did his own commentary? Like he's literally <laughs> going to be like, wireless microphone walking to the ring okay that was amazing <laughs> this is gonna be a stare time Brent, this is the first time it's ever been done where the person singing the song is gonna wrestle the match right afterwards <laughs> how this works. i was gonna say like if bad bunny didn't even do that who the f- does chris jericho think he is that wrong it's fucking jericho Wh- which again would work if he was a heel right like oh a heel he's so obnoxious he's gonna do his own song but he's like- now a face Recently, speaking of which, recently on TikTok, I happened to see a video reminding me of when Flair, when Jericho was hosting Raw, and Fozzy performed throughout the show, and then because he was such a heel, they had Flair like attack Fozzy and like be destroy all the equipment. <laughs> that was, I forgot that happened. I completely forgot oh about God. that. Like <laughs> no, nobody that. likes musical performances at wrestling events. Really, like the, the only time it's ever really worked was for like motorhead doing triple h and and like yeah. the the dx band doing dx it, other than that when has it ever been fun for anyone but here's the thing the the crowd wants to sing the crowd doesn't want to hear chris jericho sing <laughs> yeah no thing how is this thing along gonna work like how is that gonna work or the live performance like i don't know i how... really think that with jericho's ego he'll be like shut up i'm trying to sing <laughs> i'm curious how that's gonna work with live performance actually good point i didn't think of that <laughs> then again if if there's anyone who can come up with a weird way of making it work i think chris might come up with something to twist it and not just be a performance the live he is used to doing live performances so like he probably has a way of like saying what's up the crowd saying let's have them do it like i could totally see that happening like at a concert like 100 percent but well, this entry is going to take forever to do that. <laughs> anyway, mm-hmm. yeah, he's facing off against Will Ospreay, who for some reason has Don Callis in his corner. Don't know why, but he does. Um, <laughs> this is that match I said, if, the, if they have this match, you know Will Ospreay is going to be the face by this crowd. There's no way that Jericho is going to get cheered mm-hmm. Will Ospreay is in the ring with him. So Will Ospreay is probably going to win this one because Jericho could lose the match at the end of the world. It's not it, him. It, is Will Ospreay part of the Don Callis family? Oh, I think Will Ospreay's just being, I think he's just, I think John Callis is cornering him because they wanted Will Ospreay on this show, so they threw him uh, in the storyline. I think yeah. that's what happened here. Why <laughs> don't they just make the United Empire part of the Don Callis family? That, that, there's no problem there. That'd be fine. I, I don't see an issue with that personally. Or why didn't you just have the United Empire come out and attack Jericho as a favor to Don Callis? And yeah. they don't even have to have mm. the Don, be a part of it. I mean, that would have made more sense too. <laughs> like, so I, England uh, versus Canada. Yeah, okay, that works. So, right, <laughs> Jericho. Dad, why don't you start us off? Go ahead. Uh, I one question I got is why are we having this match? Because number one, I mean, if, if if there's an issue between Jericho and Callus, don't you think we should have Jericho and Callus wrestle? No, you don't want Callus to wrestle. Yeah, I oh, do. What? what? I want to see the man get his ass kicked. And he what? was a wrestler. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. I want I want to see his Bruno Mortalis come off and you know get another Ooh. gash in his forehead. Have you have you noticed that gash in the forehead? Right, I love this. Whenever that he has those artworks made of himself, he highlights it even more to make yeah. himself look even tougher. <laughs> it's like it's like brighter than it is in real life. Yeah, <laughs> kind of like it would be like an S for Superman. Now he's got the gash for Callus. <laughs> um, I don't see Jericho coming on top if you want to basically draw out the storyline and, and have Callus throw some more people against Jericho. So, yeah, Will Osprey's going to win this one. All right. Um, Sal? Um, yeah, I, I feel like Will Osprey has to win. And, you know, what a, what a great boost for him it would be to win in front of a crowd like that, too. True. Very, very true. Um, honey, go. Um, Osprey, because I'm contractually obligated by my offspring to say that. Fair enough. Um, John, your offspring looks Osprey. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm the same. I think Will Osprey. Uh, I, I think you'll be surprised how many people do cheer Jericho, though, just because of who he is. True. Um, I think it's going to be a bit of a split, kind of like everyone's cheering for both. Um, but I think Osprey will come out on top. He he needs the win. 
Jericho can afford the loss, especially turning face, makes you sympathize with him more. Don Callis is going to screw him over at some point, surely. So, yeah. Let's just practice now. Let's go, Osprey Jericho. Let's go, Osprey Jericho. Jericho. That's what you're going to get, 100%. I'm going to say a theory that I've heard, and that's going to make me even happier in a way. Um, So the theory I've been hearing is that Osprey is going to win because Sammy Guevara is going to join the Don Callis family. Oh. oh! Oh my God! If Sammy Guevara, wait a minute! You just Osprey ever touch our child will just combust. <laughs> I just, I just, I just for real. I just when when Blake just said, I just an idea popped into my mind. <laughs> what if the whole Jericho Appreciation Society now become members of the Don Callis family? That would not be that perfect. No. Actually, would it be that far fetched? <laughs> I don't know if I would like that though. Come on, Jenny Garcia, it's too much. But but That's think about much. it: all the people that Jericho screwed over are now going against him. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I I, just, I had to throw that out there as a theory that I'm hearing. But um, I, I think Osprey's going to win too. All right, let's get to the um the championship matches. AEW Women's World Championship. It is um South A for me, please. Hikaru Shida. Thank you. Versus Tony Storm, Soraya, and Dr. Britt Baker. Everybody now. D. D. M. D. Right. So back to what we were talking about before with Tony Storm. I'm loving this character right now. Ever since she dropped the belt. Her promos have been fantastic. And her promos on Collision have actually been even funnier because they've had more time for her to like be weirder. And the fact that she keeps throwing shoes at whoever did back to if you were at first, I, at first, I didn't get it. At first, I was like, what the hell is this? But the more she does it, the funnier it gets. <laughs> Lost it with that the first time. So yeah, to- Tony Storm is losing her damn mind. I love it, though. <laughs> so, I guess, here's the thing in Afro 2, is that Rip Baker has temporarily stepped away from her dentistry practice. I did hear that recently, actually, too. To focus oh. more on wrestling, because as she said, you never know when Tony's going to need me more, and basically he's putting that that he's going to need people more often than not. So she did that. So my thing would be, if you're going to make that type of move, wouldn't it be logical to then put the belt on Dr. Britt? That's a very good question. Um. Honey, what do you think? I didn't. <clears throat> what? Thinking that Britt wins because she gave up her dentistry. He's taking a break from being in tennis for a, for a little while. Mm. I don't necessarily think that that's going to like insinuate that she wins. Like, How about we let Sheeta have the belt for more than like a second first and really build something between her and Britt before we just throw the belt on Britt. Um, and at the end of the day, I think Britt doesn't need the title. I think Sheeta needs the title. I, I just thought of a theory. I had an idea. Um, so you have Sheeta win, and then you have um the you have the outcast attack Sheeta and Britt Baker after the match, and that where Jamie Hayter comes out to make the save. Oh, mm-hmm. That's again, she- see, she's injured, uh, but you can still use her. Ooh. Back- yeah. so back- I'm theory from earlier that even though they're hurt, they can still be on the show because she really wanted to be on this card. Right. <laughs> she's got, she's got to yeah. appear. You, you can't honestly, do it and have another. Give her a kendo stick. Exactly. Exactly. Or honestly, if, if fine, you don't want her to get physically involved. Have her hand Sheeta the kendo stick. Right there. Yes. There, there you go. There it is. Done. Absolutely perfect. And then her presence is big enough. Or or have or she can grab someone's ankles and. Yeah, yeah, you can do something without getting physically involved. Right. She's not going to take a single bump, but the crowd is going to be so so behind her that it's not going to matter. Like, it's exactly. not, yeah. well, exactly. could, could, but, can you hear the roar of the crowd if she comes running down the aisle? No. Yeah, crazy. Let's not have her run. Let's not have her take any <laughs> chances that will injure her long term. I'm literally saying even have her... Like come out of the underneath the ring or from the crowd, maybe from the crowd. Literally, oh, just the there, hoodie you on. there you go. And there then just go. take off the hood, like 
don't and the thing is is they need to be very careful with her because with the adrenaline rush that she'll inevitably get from hearing the crowd she's gonna think that she's able to do more than she can and i just worry that she'll hurt herself more if they don't tell her like this is what you need to do this is it like don't give her free reign she'll get carried away yeah so all right um so who just picked it with me and Andy? So Sal, who's winning the match? Call me crazy. 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 Uh, crazy. <laughs> um something tells me Soraya is gonna win. Ooh. Oh. And then that leads to her and Tony Storm, and then inevitably Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, um getting together and then maybe Ending at, you know, like, okay, pay per view. I'm Grand Slam coming up after that. Like, we have stuff happening. Like, there's a lot of shows right. coming. So, um, I think finally, John, go ahead and make it official. I'm going with Sheeta. I think, uh, Sheeta, she needs to have a, at least a semi decent title reign. Like, uh, you know, because last time she was the champion, there were no fans. So no. I think this is sort of like, not an apology, because it's not their fault, but like, a, let, let's give you something nice for a little while. And I think Soraya <laughs> went into me, it's too obvious. It's like, it would feel to the fans, like to me watching as, a, as an English person, I would be like, oh, you've just made a win because she's English. That's stupid. I would, get re- <laughs> I would be annoyed. I'd be, because I love her, right? I love her, but she hasn't done enough in AEW to warrant that. I don't also- think. The other thing is, Soraya is not Paige. Soraya is. Paige. I haven't, is this I, Paige you speak of? <laughs> but I haven't seen, like, I haven't seen a fire. I haven't seen anything to make me think that she even wants to be champion. She doesn't alone. have that that ruthless aggression. Is that it? Yes, it doesn't have the it factor. Yeah. I I understand what Mandy's saying. She doesn't have the it factor that she had as Paige. Like Paige was, I feel like there's a whole different character. Like there is something different. I, I don't know what it is either. There's the it factor isn't there. Well, maybe think... she just doesn't want to get too. You know, she she's still trying to look after herself a little bit. So I, I like that she's involved and she's doing stuff and she always comes out with the fashion she's... and things like that. But but yeah, I... but and and that is fantastic. But should that be champion? No. No. Well, she can drop it the following week at All Out. <laughs> True. Yeah. Or, or wait, no, no, no. That's Mercedes Monet. She's not going to be on the show. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that we know of. <laughs> oh, no, true. Or she kept that going because she got hurt. Like by accident, that whole thing kept going. <laughs> or, or Tony Storm wins the belt, but she can be like Christian Cage, where I'm going to defend my title. You know what? They didn't do that the first time, so they're not going to do it this time. Right, but, but I honestly feel like anybody winning will propel Tony more and more into this crazy character. Into yeah, into this crazy character. Into like she's she's delusional. She's having a menti be like just let her have her her time with her her pretty curls and her red lipstick and you know just call it a day. She's delulu. It's okay. By the way, there is one thing I will say that Tony Storm, by the way, is on New Japan television has been helping Juice. In U.S. shows, like in U.S. shows, she comes out and helps Juice. So who is she helping? Rock hard, Juice Robinson. So, yeah. all right, let's move on. Next match: um, AEW World Tag Team Championship match. It is FTR, hopefully, against the Young Bucks. <laughs> uh, here's the hopefully. problem. Here's the problem. Um, I actually figured FTR would retain this match, you know, until Mister Dumbass there got himself arrested. So now. Yeah. Um, I I think they're gonna put the belt on the Bucks just because. Um, yeah. no other reason than because there's no reason. But then then he can go and deal with his issues. Um, Sal, I see you shaking your head. Go ahead. Yeah, I agree. Um, all day I would have said FTR. Then that happened, and uh, guns are not allowed in this match. So <laughs> I think the young Bucks are gonna win. Um, honey, go. Honestly, I thought the Bucks were gonna win it all along. So nothing really changes for me. I'm kind of I'm kind of feeling that FTR is kind of flat. Like it's just the same shtick over and over again. They're not. I think somebody I, I don't know who I, you 
like alluded to this that they would have been great in like the 80s like yes. they're very vintage like their music their clothing like their just everything about them is very vintage and i think now dad ass it just it, it kind of falls back what's interesting is that we we're talking about that and the, the ftr bullet club gold match was phenomenal like that match they did on collision that fit- do they put on great matches yes I don't like it just I'm I'm really torn about FTR. Like I want to like them, but I just stop fucking giving Dax the microphone. Seriously. <laughs> Jack um, guys out. Dom Dad, go ahead. You you next. Um, we get it, you love your tequila, your wife, and your kids. Who doesn't? Do you have to have it in that order though? <laughs> I mean, tequila always comes first, surely. Exactly. Well, isn't isn't your wife's name tequila? No. <laughs> oh, oh my god! Next. All right. Um, Go my heart goes out, and I want FTR to win. But no, I think the Young Bucks are old. Will, will take the titles only because that'll free up the situation that I don't think Tony wants to get into, which is having FTR give them back the belts. By the way, I'm going to throw out something else. You know there's going to be a press conference after this show, a press scrum. Do you really want FTR on there if they're champions? <laughs> really? Wait, do you have to have well, everybody on the press scrum, or can you be choosy like WWE? Really, AEW has been doing a thing where they bring out the champions after that night on the press scrums. I would not trust them to put FTR out there. I would not on any level. <laughs> I think if that would be the case, Tony would have to lay a ground rule like, okay. I'm like, you do it with Punk. Why would you do it with FTR? <laughs> I, mean, it would have to be well, I mean, you you would you would say, okay, I don't want any questions regarding FTR because it's a situation the that problem, you know, the problem with that is you have real media there and they're going to want to talk about it. That's the problem with that logic. And it's not like WWE, but, it's not like WWE, where they actually take the time, like Mandy just said, where they actually take the time and their press conferences are interesting because you know they're always throwing certain people, and you know they vetted questions before we went on the air. You know they did. And the questions are always good anyway, but they vetted questions. AEW didn't vet questions. They don't do that. Again, that's because Tony Khan doesn't, like, he just sees everything as, like, a a huge game. And, like, everything is just fun and great. And that's because until he gets hit with a fight and backstage while he's doing his thing. Like, he has no control over it. He's, like, a first-time principal who can't control his high school that's because tony khan is too much of a fanboy around not the boss not and wrong. he needs to put the boss's hat on and say guys this is the way how it's gonna go you don't like it then when your contract is over take a hike um john to you you didn't get a prediction if you were gone for a minute there so ftr bucks who wins this thing is it obvious i mean i even before the things happened and i i wanted the books to win i'm a big fan of them um, and I'm a I'm a thousand percent with Mandy there. Like FTR, I I always feel like I'm alone in this. I I find them a bit boring. Like the matches are fine. I I have a good time with the matches, but there's no there's no character. There's no story to anything they're doing. Um, hey, that's what I was trying to say. You just said it better than I did. No, yeah. you said it best. Yeah, I'm stealing from you. Um, <laughs> So, yeah. so I wanted the books to win anyway, and with what's happened, I think I'm assuming they're probably going to win. So I, I'm I'm going with the with the books. I would say, and FTR, you know, they've had the belts for a little while, and there's not really been much in the way of sort of storyline with it. Is there? It's like, eh, well, okay, they've had a they've had a good few defenses, I guess. I will throw out there. I'm still to this day, and I brought this up on the show many, many times. Angry at FTR. <laughs> When they were the revival, and they had that house show match, it would lose a house party <laughs> revival, and that was the longest house show match and the most boring house show match I've ever seen in my damn life. <laughs> I have never been more bored. And you have our kid yelling to hit the shatter machine to get this match over with, like oh. forty minutes at a house show. It was one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen in my life. So like, that's the thing; it's all well and good doing like retro, old fashioned style wrestling. There, but some things have changed for the better. We don't yeah. need we don't need forty minute house show matches of just I don't know chin locks. <laughs> Basically, take, all, take downs. He went 
before WrestleMania. I don't think four matches combined went 40 minutes to- total. Like, <laughs> I mean, honestly. <laughs> but I, I sound like I'm being mean, though. I do like them. I do. I just want to like them more. I yeah. think it was Tony Schiavone that made the comparison that FTR is similar to Jim Cornette and the Midnight Express. Yes. And, and how they their tag team wrestling specials and taking out and they kind of know each other very well. Okay, that's great. But with the Bucks, you get that plus a little extra. You get mm-hmm. the high flying moves, you get the acrobatics, you get the showmanship, you get the charisma. But no promos. <laughs> but you know what I love about the Bucks? Like I know you get some critics going, Oh, all the matches are the same. No, they're not. I disagree no, completely. They're not. I you're don't... always guaranteed to see at least one thing in their matches that you're like, what the hell was that? I will throw <laughs> one more thing, and then we'll move on, because we have two more matches we have to get to. But I will throw out one more thing, that if you put the tag belt on um, Dynamite, there's actually tag teams over there that they will have tag teams you don't really collision to, like, two teams. So it makes more sense yep. on Dynamite. Because, like, all the tag <laughs> teams don't get along with Pog, because they're over on Dynamite. Um, <laughs> there you go. Oh, all right. Let's move on. We um, I said earlier we were going to skip the um, the the match for the pre-show, and because that ties into our main event, which is so stupid, but we're doing it anyway. It is the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships. It is Aussie Open against F um against um MJF and Adam Cole, baby. Why are they on the ta- Why are they on the pre-show? <laughs> no idea. But that's what we're doing. Why couldn't they? So, so there was a point made that WWE does lately has been a great idea where they do SmackDown in the city or country, whatever it is, of where they're doing the paper, the PLA the next day. And then they'll do matches like this on Friday so that on Saturday, you don't have to worry about them, especially if you have a match like this where you have your main event in a match. You do this on Collision, and then on Sunday, you do like an, you do, you do the main event. Like, it makes no sense to do this on the pre-show. Yeah, John, I see you want to talk. <laughs> well, I'm, I agree. It's it's strange, right? And it being on the pre-show is extra strange because my first thought was it's going to be something's going to happen in the match, a turn or something to set up the title match later on. So I think Aussie Open are going to win because MJF and Adam Cole, something's going to happen with them. But then that's also weird that you'd put that on the pre-show and not the opening match. So I don't, I'm not 100% confident in what I'm thinking, to be honest. Because again, like I assume oh, Adam Cole will turn heel on him or something. Something yeah. like that. MGF turning heel is too obvious for everyone, right? I, 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 my brain went to like Adam Cole turns on MJF and joins the kingdom. But I don't want that to happen either. Like I don't want Cole to turn heel. So like it's, it's a really strange situation we're in here. I think he's going to turn heel, though, because it seems like MJF is legitimately turning face. That's true. I have no problem here's, with it. Okay, Dad, go. Here, here, here's something <clears throat> to kind of think about is that MJF doesn't turn heel. Roddy Strong gets involved, costs Adam Cole the title, mm-hmm. and then you got a quandary with MJF. Should yeah. I cover and pin him hold or hold not? On. Yeah, no, no, no question. Are we talking about the tag match? Or are we talking about the main event? What are we talking about here? I'm talking about the main event. Okay, because I was just because I'm still trying to figure out how we get out of this tag match. Like, how do we get out of this? Because you don't. I don't think ba- you- basically what it is is it, with the tag match. One of the participants, I'm talking probably more Adam Cole, is going to feign an injury, and Aussie Open wins. I, it's oh a, yeah. How do you get out of this match? Like, how do you get out of this? That's I, it. You feign an injury. You basically it, say, "Okay, I tweaked my knee, and I can't, I, I can't do it. I can't, you know." Full move though. That's about that MJF thing. Like that's the MJF thing to do. That's, and there you go. You won't expect it from Adam Cole. Dude, so, I, I think I, you're onto something with that. I think you're right because it it then it then sets up later on where it turns out, oh, he's actually fine. You know. So, honey, what do you? How do you get out of out of the open MJF Adam Cole? Honey. I honestly, there's so many different ways that this could go. But honestly, I think they might win. Really? 
Okay, that's intriguing on its own. Like on its own, that's intriguing. I feel like they might win and then kind of have their differences during the match. Like, I feel like didn't WWE do something similar where you had two people that ended up hating each other becoming champions? I've done that a lot, actually. I, I off the top of my head, I can think of like uh, um, Edge and Chris Benoit. I can think of um, Shawn Michael and John Cena. I can think of like teams like and also also Cena like, and Daniel Bryan. <laughs> Well, they didn't hate each other. That's the thing. But, like, I'll throw out there another idea, honey. Back to what you thing. They did do WWE did do a WrestleMania match where it was the WWE Tag Team Champions Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero in a match on WrestleMania as champions, and they got along. So, like, they've done that too. So, we've seen everything when it comes to this variation. So, go ahead. I threw your hand up. <laughs> uh, I I'm reminded of the wonderful WCW storyline when Sting and the Giant were champions. And the Giant joined NWO, and then they had a match to see who was going to be the tag team champions and then pick their new partner. Very TNA. It's very, very TNA. <laughs> <laughs> Did you remember in TNA? Did I remember in TNA, Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle had a match for all the belts. Yeah. And then Kurt Angle had to find his own tag partner. Like, it was so stupid. <laughs> so dumb. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I liked about it is that Kurt Angle was forced to defend all the belts in one night. Like, I remember. <laughs> Hey, you know what? I don't care if it's controversial. TNA Kurt Angle, possibly the best Kurt Angle. So, all right. Um, I, I uh, see my see, now. Mandy said it. Putting the belt on them won't be the worst thing in the world. No one watching Ring of Honor anyway, so it might actually help the show. <laughs> um, or as Will Pruitt says on his audio shows, audio reviews for Collision, Ring of Honor exists. Really, it does. Where? Where does it exist? <laughs> anyway, oh. Um. I'm going to go with Adam Cole and MJF do win here. They thought what Mandy said. I actually like that idea a lot now that she said it. Um, let's go to the main event then. It'll be MJF defending against Adam Cole for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. Um, common sense for me says Adam Cole wins because he almost beat him the first time. But I have a feeling we're saying of the MJF versus CM Punk at all out. So I don't see that happening either, even though MJF's not even bringing up the fact that CM Punk has a, a championship belt <laughs> at all. <laughs> Um, I'm I mean, I'm still gonna go with my original guy. We Adam Cole wins the world championship here, and I have a weird feeling if they're gonna do it, this is where you turn Cole heel and have the kingdom help him. This is where you do it. Ah, that's how you do it right here. But um, um that's where my original. I'm gonna go with my original gut before this whole everything cr- 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 crazy. Um, Stal, go ahead, you. Okay, so call me crazy. <laughs> crazy. Um, crazy. So, I had this crazy idea in my head that during the pre-show, Roderick Strong's going to come out, attack Adam Cole, make them lose the make them lose the match. Okay. Then for the main event, Adam Cole's a little hurt. Blah blah blah. We do that whole thing that you guys are talking about. Kyle O'Reilly comes back. Oh, oh. Attacks, Adam, attacks Adam Cole, makes him lose that title too. And now we have a little Ooh, you know, triangle thing going on. That's intriguing. Like I, I, I think the king is getting involved somewhere and have Kyle O'Reilly come back. That'd be intriguing. That'd be very I, I miss Kyle O'Reilly. I miss him. So I, oh, I, like, I like that idea. Dad, go ahead. Officially. And, yeah. um, you know, officially, at, at first I was going to go MGF retains, but after hearing all the wonderful ideas that the, the group has thrown out, there is a good possibility that uh, Adam Cole could win. And then he and his bestie MJF still have that friendship. But then all of a sudden, all the other people that Adam Cole has quote unquote screwed over in the past are going to attack them. You know, Roddy Strong, Kyle O'Reilly, the rest of the kingdom. So I see like, and I, I hate to say it, I'm not going to say it, but I'll, I'll say it. It's like <laughs> EW's version of the Judgment Day. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about it. Like, uh, how do you? What do you think? Officially, main event. What happens? I would like Adam Cole to win. I think MJF is going to win, and I think he's going to finish his own story with CM. Oh, don't go there. No, 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 no. We don't know. <laughs> There. No, no. I see what you did there. Um, John, go ahead. Officially, main event. 
I am going to go kind of in between everything that's been said. I'm going to say MJF retains because of um, because of Roddy and Kyle coming back, attacking Adam. They're annoyed at him. They they think he's turned their backs on them. Where was he for them? You know, kind of, and maybe they both join the kingdom, and it makes the kingdom a bigger a bigger thing within AW and ROH. That's a good point. That's a good idea. All right. Well, that is all in. Let's get out of here. We have gone long, which is not a bad thing. It happens. It definitely happens. Um, Sal, why don't we? So that means so that means that uh, the show is going to be like a a, a twenty hour event at least. Come on. <laughs> Um, so take it away, go drop up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For more information on our show, including where you can find us on social media, including X, not the porn site, uh, <laughs> or watch the show on YouTube. Go to the Blake and Uh, and please, 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 please don't forget to comment or leave a rating and review, and we will make fun of you on the show. The X is pretty much turning into a porn site at this point. I forgot to say, we're closing the show with um, a song I actually heard on TikTok. It's um, Mel KB singing um i've had enough i i put this on my insta story the other day and i think somebody read it and i have no problem with that um hey i'm um, dad say your thing go hey as always it's been your pleasure and if you happen to have a local independent wrestling organization where you live at please go see these people these are young men and women that are coming up in the world of sports and entertainment professional wrestling that want to entertain you and show you what they can do as far as a character, their gimmicks, their finisher, their promos, and the whole package in order to get to that wonderful brass ring into a major wrestling organization. And please behave responsibly. We're all adults. We don't have to basically No, we're not. Push. What? You're not an adult? Damn it, be an adult. He's not a responsible adult. That's actually what he was saying. Oh, well, there you yes. go. So, so I like to play with knives. <laughs> just don't run with scissors. We're getting loopy. We're getting loopy at this point. Um, <laughs> Dodd, one more time, plugs go. Yeah, if you want to hear more of me, you can check out my podcasts, Bat Minute, Miami Minute, and Hedvig Inch by Angry Inch. Find them everywhere you can get get your podcasts. Uh, if you want to listen to insanely bizarre, very, very English punk rock, you can check out our band, Pete Bentham and the Dinner Ladies. Uh, and why don't you also uh, have a look at local Liverpool wrestling company, TNT. Very, very, very good. And we're doing a, I say we, like I'm part of the company, uh, a cross promotion <laughs> with GCW soon. It's GCW versus TNT. Yay. So that'll be loads of fun. Uh, like with this, you get loads of loads of big uh, stars coming over um, regularly. In fact, the, the music at the start made me think we have Irish wrestler Session Moth Martina. She's she's here all the time, and she's a lovely person. Great to meet. All right, um, honey, anything you want to plug with scissors on your face? Mm -hmm. Scissor me, daddy ass. There you go. All right, next week we will be back to um look at all in. Preview, maybe preview all out. They announced anything else, but the two matches they've announced, and um, talk about payback. And you know what? Well, surprise, John's gonna be back next week. Ah! Yay! <laughs> You're <laughs> sick of me. Right before we came on, he'll be on next week. Still um, John. Yeah. Um, guys, did yeah. y'all know that Terry Funk passed away? What? What? No. Get what? out. Time, time. What happened? Holy shit! Yeah. Oh my god! I like live. Yeah. <laughs> What? Let me take. What is this dude? Oh no! Is this oh dude? shit! Holy well, shit. that's a downer to end on, isn't it? Jeez. Oh, sorry, sorry, but you guys always complain that it happens after you record. So finally, <laughs> Foley's post. Foley's post. Oh, my God. oh shit! Sorry. Oh, go go oh, watch no. some Terry Funk matches, legend. people. Uh, hardcore legend. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um. Wow. Get up. Wow. Okay. Wow. She's that completely through me. I didn't expect well, that. I, then I guess we have something to talk about for the next show. Wow. Terry Funk. Wow. wow. Okay. I guess we should get out of here, but wow. Um, uh, right. Legend. Let's get out of here. Um, Thank you, John. Thank you, Mandy, so much for coming on the show today. This is awesome. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And um, I'm Blake. Uh, I'm Sal. I'm Mark. And listening to the Blake and Sal show with Mark. Have a good day, everybody. Hey, guys. Have a good weekend. Beat the heat. Stay cool. Or don't. Whatever. Goodbye. <laughs> See ya.
And for the boys who don't care who they destroy, I told the snow was not its choice. You cannot silence our voice. No, they're our bodies, our spirits are lost. Thank you so very much. Goodbye and good night. Bye bye, bitch. <laughs>